welcome everybody it has just gone three o'clock and I'm going to start with the Emperor's new clothes which is one of my favorite fairy stories there was once an Emperor and his name was Hubert Hubert the Haughty some people called him Hubert the Handsome was the name he preferred also Hubert the Bald because he didn't like to tell anybody but he was going bald he had been incredibly good looking in his youth very very good looking everybody swooned over him and he realized he could get a lot of popularity from his people by walking around in gorgeous clothes looking absolutely so drop-dead gorgeous everybody swooned and thought he was the best emperor in the world as he got a little bit older, a little bit fatter and a little bit balder, he began to spend more and more on clothes and making himself look gorgeous. He thought that's what being an emperor was about. He wasn't worried about his people if they got enough food or enough clothes or enough houses. He spent all the country's money on his clothes. In fact, behind his palace, he had another palace built just as grand and just as big and in the downstairs rooms there were shoes rooms and rooms full of shoes and cloaks and coats and jackets and hats and upstairs was filled with stockings and trousers and shirts and waistcoats and he had a hundred staff just to look after his clothes designing sewing not much mending because he didn't wear his clothes enough for that and washing and ironing and pressing he was so obsessed with clothes he never thought about anything else now one day two scoundrels came into the kingdom now a scoundrel as you know is somebody who's a bit bad a bit naughty not very nice now they had started out okay there were two brothers one was a weaver and the other was a tailor so the weaver made cloth and his friend the tailor cut it up and sewed very nice suits and cloaks. But things hadn't gone well. They were poor, they were down on their luck. But they had heard about Hubert the Handsome, this emperor who adored clothes, and they decided to see if they could con some money out of him. They went up to the palace and they said to the servants and the chamberlain, We'd like to see the emperor, please. We are weavers and a tailor, and we make the most magnificent clothes ever. Well, of course, the emperor wanted to see them straight away. So they went in and they bowed very low, and they opened up big boxes full of samples of their fabric they had made and the clothes they had made, and the king was reasonably impressed, but it was nothing special. And then the tailor said, Sire, we do have something very, very special, but let us tell you about it before we show you. Go on, said the, said the emperor. Well, said the tailor, it is a magic cloth, and it involves the finest silks and the rarest gold thread and silver thread and beautiful diamond buttons and, and all the most exquisite and most expensive of everything, but the secret ingredient is it is woven with magic. Magic, eh? said the emperor. What sort of magic? Well, said the tailor, it's, it's a very special magic. Uh, could, could we have an audience in private, please? I don't see why not, said the emperor, and he clapped his hands and told everybody to clear out of the throne room. Right. What sort of magic is this? The tailor and the weaver looked at each other and winked very carefully so the emperor didn't see. And the tailor said, Sire, this fabric that is woven, it is the most exquisite fabric you will ever set eyes on, but it can only be seen by the good and the wise. If anybody is a fool or dishonest or bad at their job, they won't be able to see it at all. That's very interesting, said the emperor, stroking his beautifully cut beard. 
So it could actually be quite useful at court. I could see who is good at their job, who's telling the truth, and who I can trust, who I can trust to do a job well. Exactly, sire, said the weaver. And may I see a sample? And the weaver and the tailor looked round and seeing they were alone, they picked up a very small case and they opened it and said, we only have a little bit, sire, because it is a thousand gold pieces a metre, <sighs> said the king. That, that was expensive even for him. But then between them, the tailor and the weaver picked the cloth out of the box and held it up. Well, you know and I know there's nothing there, is there? I can't see anything. Boop, boop. But the king was so embarrassed to say he couldn't see anything, he rubbed his eyes and he thought, I'm losing my eyesight, I can't be bad at my job because everybody adores me, I'm Hubert the Handsome. And he reached out and he touched the cloth or pretended to and he said, my, that's exquisite fabric. And, and I've got a, an anniversary, anniversary of my coronation's coming up in about a month's time. Uh, could you make me a, a suit of this in time for a month? Oh, yes, said the weaver and tailor, but we would need some money in advance. Very well, said the king. How much do you need? Oh, um, 5,000 gold pieces. W would, would that be all right, sire? Oh, I think we could manage that. And he clapped his hands again and called for his chamberlain and said, Give these two men 5,000 gold pieces and a room to work in. And so the tailor and the weaver went downstairs, very pleased with themselves. They got a big pocket full of gold and a nice dry room to live in for the next month. Well, the weaver set up his loom and the tailor had a big table set out and they bought very fine a uh, thread of various colours of silk and gold thread and silver thread and diamond buttons, just as they'd promised. And once everything came, they then pretended to go out to buy the magic, but they didn't tell anyone where they went. They just said, Shh, it's a secret mission. And they came back with a big bulging bag, which had actually got nothing but old screwed up newspapers in it. And they pretended it was very big and very heavy and bulging with magic. And then they went to their special workroom and they started to weave and to sew. The weaver sent his shuttle backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And the tailor got his big scissors and went snip, snip, snip. And then he threaded his needle with what to you and I is invisible thread and held it up and started to stitch and sew. And after a couple of weeks, the emperor was very curious and he sent his chamberlain down to see how it was getting on. Well, the chamberlain walked in and saw silk and gold thread aplenty, but the weaving loom seemed to be empty and the tailor seemed to be sewing nothing. But of course, he daren't say there was nothing there. I mean, how could he make him look stupid? And so he said, my, that's exquisite. That's wonderful workmanship. The emperor will be thrilled. And so the emperor believed his chamberlain. And the day before the big parade to celebrate the emperor's coronation, the weaver and the tailor asked if they may have an audience with the king as a fitting, a last fitting to make sure everything was perfect. They were taken up to the emperor's chamber. And there the two men held up a wonderful cloak, or so they said it was a wonderful cloak, and waistcoats and shirts and trousers and stockings. And they spread it all out. And the king looked and thought, help, I'm either going blind or I am completely useless at my job. I must be going blind. So he rubbed his eyes and said, oh, my eyes are a bit tired today, but it does look magnificent. And so the men said, would sire kindly undress and we will try it on and make sure that everything fits perfectly. Well, the emperor took all his clothes off except for his boxer shorts, which were pink polka dots. They were very, very pretty pink polka dots. The two men tried very hard not to laugh and they put the, the pants and the stockings and the shirt and the waistcoat on the, on the emperor and then they got his cloak 
and all the time they pretended to adjust and to fit and to pin and to tuck. And the emperor said, it's uh, quite chilly, isn't it? And the men said, oh, it's, it's just a cool day, sire. We did the summer version. If you would like a, a sort of ermine lining to put under things in winter, that can be arranged. I think that would be wise, said the emperor, trying very hard not to shiver because you know and I know he was just standing there in his pink boxer shorts. <laughs> well, the next day, the men came up to the Emperor's chamber early, and there he was, and today he'd got purple polka dot boxer shorts, and he stood there while the men pretended to dress him. And then he put on his new white leather shoes with golden buckles. The hairdresser came and put a nice black curly wig on his head and then the crown and then the pretend cloak was put around his shoulders and everybody oohed and aahed at how magnificent the emperor looked. The trumpets were blaring and the emperor went down out of his room and down the stairs and four page boys came and pretended to pick up the train that they were holding the train of the cloak and they followed the emperor downstairs looking at each other as if to say this is bonkers but nobody dared say anything otherwise they'd be accused of being no good at their job or being stupid and the carriage was waiting outside the palace front door and the emperor looked at the carriage and said no no i shall walk so everybody can admire my beautiful new clothes so the carriage was taken away, and the emperor wearing nothing but his mauve purple polka dot pants and his new white leather shoes walked through the crowds. Crown, wig, pants, shoes, and of course he carried his big gold mace, a big gold stick to prove he was king. Everybody fell silent. The whole crowd went absolutely pale and white, and they were thinking, <gasps> We're all stupid, because of course they'd all heard the story. And the emperor walked and everybody thought, well, we better cheer. Hooray! Hooray! The emperor's new clothes. Hooray! He looks magnificent. Hooray! Hooray! Except for one little boy who wriggled between the crowds, looked up the emperor and said, clear as anything, but he's got nothing on! At which point... Everybody burst out laughing. They'd all said what they knew was true, but nobody dared say. But this little kitty was only little, and so he didn't know that it was the wrong thing to say. And everybody joined in the shout. Hey, the emperor's got nothing on except his pants and his shoes. Hee hee. And the emperor went beetroot red. One of the soldiers who'd been escorting him took off his jacket and said, Sire, you look a little chilly. May I put this over your robe? And the emperor huddled the soldier's jacket on, turned round and ran all the way back to the palace. Now, he looked for the weaver and the tailor to throw them in prison, but of course they had run away with all the silk and all the gold thread and the 5,000 gold pieces they'd been paid, and they'd gone. Nobody knew where. But from that day on, the king decided he was going to be good at his job and bother about his people. And he sold all the clothes and he put the clothes where it was needed into looking after his people. And so he became, instead of Hubert the Handsome, he became Hubert the Kind or Hubert the Humble. And they all lived happily ever after, which is just as it should be.